Hello and welcome to another review of Drones Visual. In this video I will show you how to upgrade the firmware of the already popular transmitter Flysky FS i6S. As many of you know, Flysky released the transmitter some months ago and although it was looking really nice and it offered the possibility to be used with a 10 channel receiver, it lacked certain features. First, both sticks were spring loaded. And I made a video about how to modify this, although they have already started selling the version without the spring. The second issue with this transmitter was the fact that the initial firmware was very limited, especially by the fact that it had no model memory. Well, now this is about to change as we go ahead and do the upgrade. So today we will do the firmware upgrade and we will then contrast the older uh, setup menu uh, with the new one. There was an initial firmware uh, update file that started circulating around and I believe it had some bugs, so I produced some issues with the channel uh, endpoints. The firmware I'll be using today does not have those issues. I will put a download link in the description of the video uh, so you can get it from there. I have good news from you uh, because updating this transmitter is very simple and you'll be surprised about how fast uh, things go. So okay, let's then go ahead and proceed uh, with the update. The awesome thing about the Flysky FS i6S is the fact that it comes with a USB port. So you can directly plug it to your computer using any USB cable you find around. Here at the bottom, you can see the USB port where you will insert the cable to perform the update. Let's go ahead and insert the USB cable while the transmitter is off. Although it does not really matter whether the transmitter is on or off at this point, so don't worry too much about that. Once the transmitter is connected, we can then move to the computer. The software to update the transmitter will be compressed so in a zip archive. So to extract it, just right click the archive and select extract here. I have only tested uh, this software on Windows. As you can see, uh, the software is a .exe extension. So I'm assuming that this would only work on a Windows computer. Anyways, let's proceed to open the updating software and let me tell you that initially when you do that, uh, if you have an antivirus software in your computer, it might give you a false positive or a warning. That will depend on the antivirus you're using. If you see this, don't panic. Just ignore the warning message and proceed. Although if you really don't trust the program, you can of course uh, power your friend's computer so yours doesn't get infected. Nah, I was just kidding about that. Let me tell you that if you don't see the program after you double click it, take a look on the taskbar. The program might be actually open, but minimized just visible on the taskbar. The software is actually very simple. There are no options available other than the options to uh, close the software or update the transmitter. I would like you to pay attention to the blank space in the software. In that space, you will see the transmitter once we enter the upgrade mode that I will show you in a moment. Now we will move back to the transmitter. First, uh, we will turn on the transmitter and uh, we will then go ahead and navigate to the about section. Why to do this? It's not really necessary because you probably need this upgrade, but I think it's a good practice to always check uh, the current firm firmware ratio that you're running. In this case, uh, 0.99 is an old firmware. I definitely know that I need the upgrade. Uh, then I will come back to the setup menu and I will navigate uh, to the section called firmware update. Here you have it. In the firmware update section, we will be prompted with a message indicating that all other functions will be halted as the transmitter is updated. Let me tell you uh, that if you're going for an update like this, you might expect to lose any custom configuration you have done. I'm not saying you will, but you could. So keep this in mind. Uh, okay, so basically we have here the firmware update section now and we're pretty much ready to go. So the only thing we need to do is press the continue button and you have to make sure that the transmitter is connected like now to your computer. As soon as we press the continue button, we'll hear a funky sound from the transmitter and the default sound in Windows for when you connect a USB device. There is no information about this, but I suggest that uh, you don't touch the transmitter during the whole process 
and also make sure uh, it does not disconnect during the firmware update as this I assume could uh, crash your current firmware so make sure you have it in a safe place and, and it doesn't disconnect okay let's see what is happening on our computer screen as we enter the update mode uh, we will notice soon after entering the update mode that the blank space in the center of the software uh, populates with a bunch of numbers and a message telling us that, the, that, uh, sorry, <laughs> that the transmitter is ready for update. You will also see a column at the end that will display the progress of the update. So pretty much we are all set for the big moment and uh, we are a step away uh, from having an awesome transmitter. Let's then proceed and press the update button and see what happens. You can see that the status changing, uh, telling us what's going on, and then we see a percentage value in the last column, and judging by how fast it's going, uh, we know this will be end soon. After the update process is completed, the receiver will reboot, and you will hear the classical beeping sound. Here it comes, yeah. Then we can go ahead and press the close button and exit the application. Now let's navigate to the about section and take a look at the current firmware to make sure it updated success successfully. 1.11 and we had 0.99, so things are working well so far. Now after the update, the manufacturer recommends that you do a stick calibration. This is done by navigating to the stick adjustment section and sort of uh, calibrating the sticks there. Let's go ahead and proceed, uh, proceed with the SIG calibration. This is the way uh, the manufacturer sort of recommends you do it. Uh, I'm not sure that's, <laughs> that's a conventional method, but well, that's the way they say you can do it. I I'm going to show you now the way I did it, and I think it works fine as well. Uh, but I just want, you know, I just wanted to show you both methods so you, you have enough information. Uh, it's not so important, I think, but just, yeah, basically what I did is just move the sticks around to the full extension of the channels uh, and that did it for me. Anyways, if you have any problems with your channels after doing this, I will show you uh, a way to fix it. Once you're done with these steps, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at whether the channels are behaving properly, especially the endpoints that were a bit of an issue in the previous uh, update. We're going to go now to the channel section here and go channel by channel to see whether everything is working properly. I can see right away that my channels are not behaving in the desired way. So if you're experiencing this, I will show you a very easy way to fix it. So don't panic. <laughs> it's not a big deal and it can be easily fixed. To do that, uh, to fix I mean, any irregularities we might find with the channels, we will need to do a so-called factory reset, which is pretty simple. Uh, to do a factory reset, we need to navigate to the factory reset section in the system menu and press yes. Then we return to our channel section uh, and we will monitor uh, once more and check whether the channels are working properly. And everything seems to be working well. Now the switches are not assigned to any channel, so you don't see them here become active. Uh, but I want to check also whether they're working properly, especially the dials. So let's assign them to a channel as well. We then need to navigate to the aux channel section to assign a channel to those dials. I will also try a three position switch to make sure they're working properly as well. I'm going to select channel five. Then after selecting the channel, uh, you ask about what switch or dial do you want to assign to that channel. Uh, as I was mentioning a moment ago, I'll try a three position switch in channel five and then I will assign one of the dials to channel uh, six and the other one to channel seven. So basically I have assigned uh, the dials to channel six and seven and the three position switch to channel five. Okay, so once we have assigned uh, the channels, we can then return to the channel uh, section we saw before to test whether the channels are working properly in terms of uh, endpoints. So uh, we then proceed to check the throttle and the rotor, which are channel three and four. Uh, we move the sticks to their full extension. 
and they're working properly no problem with that as you can see here then we will proceed to check the elevator and the aileron which are channel uh, channels 2 and 1 they seem to be working normally as well although in channel 1 there is a bit that does not go all the, end here, all the way here but I'll assume, I'm, I'm, I'll assume that that's not a major issue ok let's then go ahead and proceed to uh, test the aux channels which basically is a 3 position switch and both dials remember that here is a 3 position switch that I assigned to channel 5 we move the switch across uh, through its 3 positions and take a look at channel uh, 5 as you can see channel 5 seems to be behaving normally no issues detected there you can apply the same technique of course to all switches and check one by one if you want to make sure the next thing I would like to do uh, is to test the dials and then here we have the left dial which was assigned to channel 6 let's take a look here it's working pretty nice no problems here with channel 6 which is the left dial and then we'll go ahead and test also the right dial which is channel 7 and then we move it also to its full extension to make sure that it's working properly and it seems to be working properly as well so basically I say to you congratulations you have fully uh, a fully functional transmitter now so you're pretty much ready to go although we have fully upgraded now our transmitter there are a few things that I would like to show you first I would like to contrast the older setup menu versus the new one and the second thing is that I want to show you the models uh, section and how to trim this transmitter so let's go ahead and take a look at that here you have the table uh, showing you the older setup menu and another table uh, showing you the new upgraded uh, setup menu so you can compare them now let's take a look at the settings menu here on the screen the menu is divided uh, in two parts uh, one of the parts is the function section and the other one is the system section so let's go ahead and take a look at the function section and it has reverse endpoints sub trims and trims then we have uh, rate and expo aux channels and uh, we have mix and lastly we have a uh, fail safe let's then go ahead and take a look at the system section in the system section we have the binding models output modes stick modes throttle mode brightness brightness and sound sorry uh, factory reset and the about section which basically is the last option here let's now proceed uh, to take a look at the model memory that we initially didn't have to do that we enter the setup menu and go to the system menu section we are actually already there uh, so we basically can uh, move between models and select any model we want uh, this uh, option didn't exist in the previous firmware at least in this transmitter so basically you can also reset your models and you can see it here down the screen the next thing I would like to cover is the trim basically to trim your transmitter you need to again go to the setup menu then uh, go to the trim section and here you have an explanation of how to do it basically so it, it tells you that you need to go to the channel section and press key 1 and key 1 are the keys on the rear of the transmitter and then move the stick to the desired uh, position so I just press on here and let's go to the channel section uh, to do it let's go ahead and trim the elevator to do that we press key 1 remember the left button on the rear of the transmitter as soon as you do that you will hear a beep sound and then we move the elevator towards the direction that we wish to trim you will hear a beeping sound and you will see how the channel indicator changes over time when you think you're done you just stop basically and then if you want to reverse uh, the, the trim I mean go back to, to the initial position again press key 1 uh, and then uh, move the stick to the desired location and you hear a long beeping sound uh, and then you can stop because you know that it's at 50% one last thing I wanted to show you is how to access this so-called secret menu on the fly sky is the same as with the older version basically you press both sticks 
uh, to the left while you turn on the transmitter and then you can enter this sort of uh, so-called <laughs> secret menu in the fly scan transmitter and you can obviously uh, take a look at the options there as well in case you're interested Okay, so basically this will conclude my tutorial about how to upgrade the Flysky FS i6s uh, and about how to use the models uh, and the trim options. So I hope I was able to help some of you. Please feel free to leave some feedback uh, telling me whether you did it in a different way. Uh, in this way we can all uh, learn and benefit. If you're interested in the topic of drones, I would like to receive the latest news directly from China. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all in my next video.